Okay, let's do it. Do it. Wait a minute. I need to think about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you Maybe said the leave same that. thing five times now. <laughs> Maybe leave that in there. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode six of the Poor Choices Show with me, your host, Chris, alongside me, my co-host, David. I'm not entirely sure what to say. Well, let's make some poor choices then. Yeah, let's do it. The bridge keeps them pretty cool. That's not warm. <laughs> It's definitely red. You know what it looks like? It is like V8. No, it's not that red. No, I mean like the, the thickness of it. Mm, thick girl. Or not the the thickness of it, but like the the opacity of it. Well, speaking of opacity, what are we drinking this week? I don't know if that has to do with opacity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, once again, we both have the same thing. It is called Riot Juice by, I don't see it on here, but I think it said Hidden Springs. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. you got it. Look at that. There you go. Yep. That's what we're drinking. It's a sour ale with blackberry, lime, and vanilla. If you couldn't tell that we're into sours by episode six, and five out of six, we've had <laughs> sours. Yeah. Now, before you drink it, take a look at the can, like, mm-hmm. right in the center where it says Riot Juice. About it. that. Is that, like, a piece of pizza? Oh, like, all the way at the top? Yeah. Yeah, it's a pizza with, like, an eye in it. Right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, kind of. Next to the dung beetle? Yeah. Uh-huh. So well, it's like space, and there's a tooth, and there's like a pomegranate. Right, but, why, but why is there pizza? There's a sheep at the bottom, too. Yeah, that's not really... Well, I guess it is food, depending on who you are, but I just, like, I feel like pizza, you know, you would think it's some kind of... I guess, yeah, I don't know if you'd think, like, cheese Maybe flavored, but... Maybe during a riot, you know, you throw a slice of pizza, or, like, at a food fight, that's kind of a riot, right? Like, bam. Just gonna I don't throw know if a bunch I consider a food fight stuff. a riot. I mean, I guess food could be flung in a riot, but... Let's try real quick and Let's we can talk it. about Cheers. stuff and things. Cheers. What's sour? The sour beer is sour. I think that's the point. That's okay. delicious. Yeah, it's actually really good. Um, right off the bat, it was like a little vanilla-y, and then on that back end was kind of the limey. The limey blackberry. That's really tasty. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, why don't you give me your one out of ten? You got you to gotta make a really bad sour for me to not to give you at least like an eight or a nine. Um, I'm going to give it a nine solely based on, I don't, I didn't really have the time to think about what I'd gauge a 10, like okay. what, what my bar is for a 10. This is so really I, close for me. It is. But without thinking about every beer I've drank, I don't want to compare it to something that I'm going nine, five. Okay. I'm going well, nine, five. Okay. If we're doing halves, I'll yeah. Nine, five. I it's, just, it's I, I couldn't bring almost, myself to yeah 10 it. It's almost perfect. It's it's everything that I love in a beer. It's really good. It's really good. So Riot Juice, highly recommend. Highly recommend. Get it. So we talk about like the food fights and stuff. Have you ever been in a food fight? Like at school or anything? I don't think so. I don't know that I've ever even experienced it. Well, there was one at South, that, that place we went to high school. Okay. When was this? Well, I guess I would have been there. If you were there, I was there. Uh, I was pro- uh, maybe sophomore or junior year. Oh, you know what? We had lettered lunches, though, so maybe I wasn't yeah, there. That's very true. So it started off pretty small. Like, you just see a random thing flying. We had a big cafeteria. It was probably a 50, 60, 70-yard cafeteria. It was big. Yeah, by, like, 30-ish, 40-ish wide. Yeah, it was, it was big, and it was just yeah. just straight lines of, you know, the normal tape, like at picnic tables. And... You'd see one thing, and you'd be like, oh, someone threw something. And it was hard for the administrators to be like, oh, that came from there, because it's just a huge room full of kids. And then you saw another thing, and you were like, oh, oh, there went something else. <laughs> <laughs> and and then all of a sudden, it was like two things at once, and then three things. And then it broke out real bad to the point where there were kids in line. We had, what, two separate lunch lines or three? There was at, at least three. I think okay. there might have been three main ones, and then I think that one all the way down the end might have been the like the dessert sweet line. Yeah, but there was at least three main lines. So the main line in the middle, um, it kind of funneled you in right and left, and then you met, and then you exited. And in, right. in the middle was all your condiments. You get your ketchups and your honey mustards and whatever. 
and we had the styrofoam trays back in the day. Um, and kids started pumping sauces into their empty trays and, and just flinging them and flinging them of the ketchup and mustard. And it was real. I'm, Teachers started blowing whistles, and this happened, and then the... <laughs> they call the, the gym teacher the, then? They, and then uh, whatever our cop that sat at the front door was running in, and... Oh, that dude, that looked like a penis. You don't remember that at all, huh? Or hearing about th- it, or... I might have heard about it, but it's one of those things, if I'm not part of it, then it's like, oh, a food fight. That's like, you hear about a shooting, you're like, oh, another one. But if you're in it, you're like, oh, I'm going to remember that forever. Man, that place was a wreck. I mean, yeah. there were chicken patties and tater tots everywhere. <laughs> It was, it was really fun at the time, but then it, it was, it was, if I remember correctly, like an earlier, maybe like a 10 or a 10 30 lunch, like one of the early ones. Yeah. So then I, everyone had to sit through the rest of the day smelling like freaking honey mustard and yeah, ketchup. ketchup. <laughs> That's great. You have any yeah. idea who started it? Uh, no clue. Like I just remember being at the table and everyone was like, oh, someone just, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, there was yeah. a point where people were taking their cartons of milk, opening them and then just throwing them with it open so the milk is it was a shit yeah. show i mean fun to be a part of but like i said th- that second half of now oh, i gotta sit through three more periods yeah, it smell like ass yeah yeah it's mm-hmm. fine well speaking of cartons of milk do you remember uh i don't remember his name but everyone just called him magic kid might have been jason I mean, or something i he's not ringing any bells the only person at lunch i remember is uh old uh give him a quarter he'll dance for you yeah yeah, yeah. so we had a guy who you give him a quarter 50 cents and he'd he'd do a little jig or a little dance for you so he could go i mean the sad part was is you know he came it was from a so he could eat upbringing yeah. so he could eat right um, it wasn't you know like a, a money-making side gig it was like hey i'm i'm hungry yeah you i'll, I'll throw do whatever you want yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i mean he would come in with uh um uncooked ramen noodles do you remember eat that? It like eat it like Brad. Do remember he'd, that? He'd pour the powder on top of the solid noodle pack and just crunch into it like some crackers. Do you remember that time he tried to stab? I think it was Antonio with a, a yeah. compass. Yeah, I do. I don't remember yeah. why. I don't know if Antonio said something or did something. I think whatever happened, it wasn't even Antonio, but he thought it was. Kind of like when Ron Artest went up and punched that dude in the face in the stands, and it wasn't even him. Well, you're the it. first person I saw, so you're getting my anger. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's funny. But yeah, so about the the magic kid. Okay, I, yeah, I yeah. guess he he got his notoriety, I guess, because he had someone pick a card, uh, put it back in the deck. He shuffled the card was gone, and then he someone else had like opened a carton of milk, and the card was in there. Like, he was doing know, this one, in high school. One of those, yeah, and everybody was like, you know, all over this dude's nuts because of that. And then I remember it was senior year for us. He might have been a year younger than us, but. I remember we were at lunch. It was like the last week or two of the year. And because I was, I love magic. So I was obsessed with them too. I was like, dude, do, do some tricks. Yeah, right, right, so right. It, it was like that last week. And I think he, he could sense my, my obsession. So he was like, Hey, do you want to be a part of this trick? And he gave me a carton of milk and was like, go act like you're going to buy this, bring it back. And I'm going to oh, do the trick to someone. So and, he and had I was a like, potsy in this the whole time yeah, he had somebody whole, under yeah. his sleeve. You know, you're. You could be an amateur magician, and you're forcing a card in someone's hand. Hey, Steve, let me get your milk. I person I've never met before. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, okay, it was cool. I was like, I felt honored to be a part of it, but it was also like, you know, how disappointing. They say, yeah, yeah, you know how like they say magicians never reveal their tricks. That's why, because yeah. you're like, no, oh, that's that's all like, you did. It's, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, it's fun when you try to like figure it out. You're like, oh motherfucker, like it bothers you. You're like, tell me, yeah. tell me, I want to know. But then you know, and you're like, ah, it's not that impressive. Yeah, well, yeah. What else you so, got that I don't know? Right. Yeah. So I don't was, remember him at all. At and, all. Yeah, I think, I'm gonna say his name was like Jason or something like that. I don't know. All right, if you should be a picture, I'm I'm sure I'd go. Oh, that guy. Yeah. I don't know. He might be in Vegas doing shows. He's over there with Siegfried with his tiger just hanging exactly. out. Exactly. Hey, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a throwback. <laughs> well, we're both like Maryland out. I got my Raven stuff on. You got your Orioles stuff on. I didn't realize the jersey from here, when I looked down after you mentioned it, it kind of looked like an Eagles jersey. So I'm glad it's not. Not that it would be. Well, but I only went with this attire after the great news of uh, the king ending his reign in Tennessee and coming coming over to Baltimore. Yeah, they said that now the Ravens finally have someone that can pass in the playoffs. Hey. And they, they had a they had a picture of Derrick Henry throwing a touchdown <laughs> against you guys in the playoffs. 
I mean, to be fair, he only throws on like fourth and ones, but still. He, he scores know, when he does, yeah. He scores when he does it. So I saw, can you imagine, it was like, can you imagine chasing Lamar Jackson around for 12, 13 seconds, one play, and then the next play as a defender, Derrick Henry's coming through the middle at you? Like, yeah, whoop, that's it gonna definitely be tough. opens it up for a variety of play calling because before it was like, all right, where's where's Lamar running? And it was outside. Is it this side or that side? And you don't really have to worry about the run because you guys never had anybody good enough to say, hey, let's let's stop the middle. Because yeah. even when they do give a running back the ball, he's going outside. But now it's like, where do you zone play? Because yep. you got to play here for Lamar, here for Lamar, here for Derek, here for Derek. Yep. You just got to hope Zay doesn't go to jail or something. I'm already picturing like just an option play. And it's Lamar running... And Derek's behind him, already getting ahead of steam. Because that's the big thing about Derek is like once he gets going, get out of the way. You can get him after those first two, three, four steps. If you hit him in the backfield, you can get him. But if he's going and Lamar's right there to like, I'm going to keep it or give it to him. I would just like lay down. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I'm good. This is you. We'll we'll get you. We'll get you on the next one. I'm definitely excited. Very I'm excited. Waiting. I'm waiting for the uh, the touchdown pass from Derek to Lamar. Oh, I was going to say like Derek to. I don't know. We got rid of two O linemen already. Somebody on the O line that's over that. Mm -hmm. His. I'm excited. I can't wait, man. Can't, can't wait. Me. What a day in free agency it was. Yeah. Well, for some Days. of us. Yeah. Jerry doesn't want to do anything. I keep seeing all these memes on Facebook. It's like breaking news: Dallas Cowboys sign no one. And I'm like, story of my life. Well, I'd I'd rather that than my division rivals signing two of our best defensive players. And now we got to play them twice a year. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough to see that. Like, and and that happened a few. What Barkley's now an Eagle, and uh, Aaron Jones is now a Viking. Yep. It's and just, just someone else that happened somewhere else. I don't remember. I don't know. Story for another time. Somebody um, somewhere. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about Barkley. Like I said, he's dude's made of glass. Um, I'm a little concerned about Eckler, but if it was any other team, I'd be concerned about Eckler. <laughs> the, the Redskins. Yes. Yeah. At this point, yeah, they they still need a couple more years to get where they want to be. For yeah, sure. well, to get halfway there. Whoa, whoa, they're halfway yeah, there. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the fuck we're doing, dude. Her, we're we're um, losing linemen. We're losing running backs. We're losing receivers. So who's your number one right now? Running back? Yeah, I guess Rico Dowdle, technically. <laughs> okay. And then Deuce Vaughn's backing him up. Yeah. Mm. Maybe you know what you guys might sign Dalvin Cook. J.K. Dobbins. It's just, it's not smart. Jake, well, yeah, it's not smart. We need someone well, who's going to be healthy for at least three, four years that can take 70% of the workload. Well, I would say maybe you draft somebody, but I don't think there's a running back worth drafting until, like, the third round. I don't know shit about college, so I could have not. You. It's quarterback heavy. I think the first, like, six, seven picks are going to be quarterbacks, and then wide well, receivers after beneficial that. beneficial because... We don't pick until twenty whatever anyway, so it's well, at least there's not like a bunch of good running backs and they're all going early. Did you get any extra picks this year? The compensatory picks? I don't know. We should get them every year with how disappointing this franchise is. Because I think Baltimore has eight total picks this year, something like that, which is great. I love it. Great, and we're really good at drafting for the most part. So I feel Exciting. like for the first couple of years, and then it's always a receiver, and you're like, God damn it. Oh, it's always a receiver. <laughs> whether whether it's production, whether it's like Zay off the field shit, it's just there's always something that you're like can't fucking win. Never it, for the past thirty years since we've been a franchise can't can't do it. All right, well we can make a whole episode about football. So let's yeah. move into the what do they say it the the guts. Yeah, but there's like a food analogy for it. The meat and potatoes. Well, that's what it is. Honestly, that is a great segue into what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> Like, the that's new perfect. Purser. <laughs> that's really good. Um, I wanted you to to finish some phrases and or sentences for me. Okay, does that sound good? Are they are they popular? Or are we just that good of friends that we're These are, finishing each other sentences? Um, it's a little bit of both. So it's some of like the most popular. I don't know proverbs or mantras, whatever you want to call them. Plus a couple that only probably you and I, maybe some of our friends would know. Okay, I thought proverbs were like a Bible thing. Isn't that something people get like tattoos of? I don't know. Continue. Okay. It could be. I don't know. It could be. Um, I'm gonna hit you. We'll start it off just so you kind of get the idea of what I'm going to be looking for and asking for. Okay. Um, first one being the grass is always. Am I finishing the whole thing? 
Yep. Or just the next word. Okay. Greener on the other side. Perfect. Yep. Okay. So that's the kind of thing we're going for here. Okay. So something like an apple a day. Keeps the doctor away. Keeps the doctor away. Cool deal. But okay. Okay. they say, if the doctor's cute, then screw the fruit. So if you have like a chick doctor and you're like, I need to go to the doctor today. So don't eat it. I don't know. Okay. Continue. <laughs> That was okay. like an eighth grade away message I had one time on AIM or something. I don't know. Oh, away messages. Gotta love it. Yeah. Uh, many hands make... I know it, but I don't know it. Many hands make... We'll just, we'll just go with lasagna. Okay. I love it. I mean, you got the first letter right. Light work. Many hands make light work. Nah, it depends on whose hands they are. And what work you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I got one that this will be a little more towards <clears throat> you and I and our group. What okay. are you waiting on? Last Supper. Bam. Um, a rolling stone, a rolling stone, I'll give you the next word, gathers a lot of dust. Nope, not a lot. A little bit of dust. <laughs> a rolling stone gathers no moss. Okay. Um, are, how, are these just like widely known? Or are they from anything in particular? Yeah, these are probably, yeah, yeah, popular mantras, okay. proverbs, whatever we're calling them right now, sayings. Okay. Uh, so a rolling stone gathers no moss, so like someone who's always on the move. Like never has that, nothing ever sticks to them. Right, you know, they're, they're always they're always going. Um, okay, how about a stitch in time? Like a, st- a literal the... stitch, a stitch yeah. in time. Give me the next word. Saves the day. A stitch in time saves nine. Okay, why? So that so that one stitch now will save you the nine stitches you'll have to do later if you don't stitch it up. Does that make sense? Yes, unless it actually. Needs, say the saying again. A stitch in time saves nine. Okay. So if you have like a, a six inch gash that needs stitches and you only stitch it once, you mean like one process of stitching or like one literal stitch? Uh, stitching something in time. So like getting ahead of it before it gets out of control. Okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, I got two more for you. Okay. Fine feathers make very nice pillows. You're close. Fine feathers make fine birds. Okay. I don't think I was that close. Well, you said very nice, and that's the same as fine. Okay. I'm trying to help you out here, man. I appreciate it. And the last one. Uh, I was very proud of this one. I'm too drunk to Let's see if you get it. I know what it is if it's a popular one. It is. But if so it's I'll, to let me taste preface this it. chicken. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was as the late, great Colonel Sanders, Sanders said, I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. Okay. Let's see. I'm if glad you, can, you got that. Let's see if you can finish these for me. Okay. What I do when I'm blacked out, I don't remember. Is none of my damn business. Oh, that's good. That, that's Joe. Uh, okay. You said the other one already. One of the last episodes. The you can't drink all day if you don't start early. Yeah. Um. If I don't remember it, it didn't happen. That's it. That was, <laughs> you know. You know who said that one? No. <clears throat> that was one of the uh the Baylor. Groom's man. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. If I yeah. don't remember it, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. That was, that was <laughs> when he, I don't want to put his business out there, but that was when he pissed all over Paul's computer at yeah. the party Paul had. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's good. So I thought that so was I a good think, segue. So good job. Good. Yeah. I think those are called idioms. I'm doing proverb. So like... Trying to think because I get this like email subscription that has like it's just like a bunch of manly shit. I'm gonna and Google what's a, what it is. They like automatically subscribed me to some other subscription that's like an idiom subscription. Okay. And uh, something, okay, you're right. It's not an idiom. An idiom is like the whole nine yards. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like um, that. So, definition of a proverb, uh, simple traditional saying that expresses a perceived truth based on common sense or experience. Often metaphorical or use formulatic language. That helps you at all. It helps me understand it. It doesn't help me feel better about not getting any of them because it said common sense. Oh, it's a better one. A proverb is a short sentence that people often quote, which gives advice or tells you something about life. For example, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Okay. I like it. All right. So I was going to get into something that you had wanted to do, but before I do that, I had a... A business idea I wanted to run by you. Hmm. Okay. I have one of my own, so you go first. Okay. So I was doing stuff in the garage the other day for the wedding. Uh, 
that love letter I was telling you about that we're going to have everyone sign. I had to make some other sign and I was using an X-Acto knife because I had to, I don't remember what the fuck I was doing. Oh, I was cutting. So the laser didn't go all the way through the wood. And so I was like in on the back of it using the X-Acto to like cut the remaining like 18th of an inch or whatever. Okay. And I kept, I kept cutting my hand and I went inside like twice <clears throat> to get band-aids. And then I like got fucking tired of going inside because the shit was taking forever. So I just started taking tape like fucking painter's tape or something I had in the right. garage and like wrapping my fingers with it. So I thought we should make band-aids for men and call them mandates. And it's literally just a roll of tape. And down the center, it has that little like not adhesive pad that's okay. on band-aids. Yeah. Just, so it's like adhesive on two sides and then that all the way down the middle. But it's like a roll of tape and we'll call it mandates. That's a great idea. Yeah. I think we should it's sign me. Where do I sign? Uh, well, I got to look it up to make sure it's not already done first. Well, let me not get ahead of myself here. Let me see a prototype and let me make sure, yeah, it's it's not a, doesn't have a trademark anywhere. It's not copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. sure I got some tape in here I can show you. I mean, that's that's the prototype. Well, yours, yours is a lot better than what I came up with at, at work the other day, um, which was uh, um, something for people with uh, like facial and nose piercings specifically. Um, so you would do, if you have a double nostril, like you have a stud in each side, right? Um, those studs would then consist of a set of just like a little jewel or something there. Each one is going to be a googly eye. Okay. Okay. Um, and then you've seen people with like their septums pierced, kind of hangs below the nose a little bit. Can I guess what you're going to say? <laughs> so go ahead. You going to put a smiley face there? No, uh, you're close. So we're going to put just like that pair of disguise glasses, we're going to put a little nose and mustache that hangs uh, off of that. So that hangs there with your two googly eyes right there. Okay. Now, do you have a name? for that i don't what are you thinking i don't know uh let's see googly eyes on the nostrils it's gotta be something spy related because it's like a disguise disguise yeah. piercing a pierce brosnan? brosnan a pierced brosnan pierced brosnan perfect <laughs> i like that's it. a great idea we might have to get his permission <laughs> yeah but, but so I, you gotta you got you gotta come up with like other things too because you can't start a business and just that be your only product like, you got to have other, like, designs, we're one, too. We're one step at a time here, and that's okay. step one. <laughs> Why don't we'll call the business Facial Expressions, and that model will be the Pierced Brosnan. That's such a good idea. <laughs> Let's do it. Perfect. Wow. I'll call I'll call Mark Cuban tomorrow. Favorite Pierce Brosnan movie, go. I only know James Bond. No, well, I don't know. We, fuck out of we're here. Gonna, we're going to talk about how little I know about movies every fucking episode. All I was going to say was Mrs. Doubtfire, but that's fine. <laughs> okay. Wasn't, no, that wasn't him. I'm not even going to embarrass myself. Uh, James okay. Bond, that sounds like a good answer, so All I'll right. go with that. I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. So, I know you enjoyed the Who Am I segment from last week. Yeah. So, I have another one. I'm a okay. little nervous that it might be too obvious. Okay. Well, if so if it comes to my head, should I just say it? Uh, No, you just let it all read out. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't really have the time to difficultify it, but okay. it is what it is. You ready? Yeah. All right. Within the contours of an unremarkable life, a figure embarks on a transformation driven by a collision with fate. This person, steeped in the world of academia, confronts a stark departure from a path of equations and theories to one where every choice weaves into the fabric of a darker existence. The shift is silent but profound, a journey from the light of a classroom to the shadows of a world governed by different laws. The essence of this tale is not just in the transformation, but in the motivations behind it. A desperate bid for security, a fight against an unseen enemy, marking a trail not with footsteps but with a clandestine signature. The narrative unfolds in layers where actions and consequences are mirrored in the complexity of human nature and the inevitable question of what one is willing to do for those they love. As the story arcs, it subtly hints at the dualities of existence and the fine line between salvation and downfall. Without overtly revealing its hand, it beckons the audience to ponder the unseen battles waged in the name of family and future, hitting at, hinting at legacy defined not by accolades but by choices. This character's journey, marked by a nuanced blend of intellect and desperation, challenges viewers to look beyond the surface to see the depth of change possible when confronted with life's most formidable formidable challenges i don't have anything off the bat uh, the equation thing 
it's got me thinking that I feel like that's the biggest clue in all everything that you said. There's a lot of just like general there's, fluff so in there's there. There's three that I thought were very big clues. Yeah. So the equation thing is really what I'm. I'm st- so somebody who was in no, academics. So don't, yeah. So ignore the equations or don't put too much into that. If you, but if instead, you struggle put too much, much into what? If you struggle too much, I'll I'll give you the clues. Oh, I'm gonna need some clues. I got nothing. Okay. So the first thing that's important is a journey from the light of a classroom to the shadows of a world governed by different laws. Is it the, Harry Potter? No. <laughs> okay. The next the next big clue is uh, a fight against an unseen enemy. And the other one is marking a trail not with footsteps but with a clandestine signature. George Bush. No. It's a fictional character? It's a fictional character. Mm, okay. Uh, let's see what else there is in here. Hinting at a legacy not defined by accolades but by choices. That's sort of a clue. They a superhero? They're not a superhero. Okay. So think about think about that in relation to the classroom thing. Hinting at a legacy defined not by accolades but by choices. I got nothing, okay. man. So their their path on education could have been great but they didn't pursue that they pursued the classroom which led to the darker past matt damon and goodwill hunting no no think of trying to see <laughs> i'm sure there's other clues in there those those are just the biggest that stand the clandestine me signature something outside of what you gave me okay uh man i thought you were halfway through you were you were knowing what this was we're all governed by different laws. Now, outside of all that stuff you read, so, a hint outside of that. Just a hint outside. Okay, uh, like a a leading hint or like a give it away hint. Not anything, because <laughs> I'm getting nothing from that. They were a teacher. Indiana Jones. No. Well, okay. It's a TV show. TV show. They were a teacher, and then they get. Oh, it's Walter White. There you go. Damn it! <laughs> How'd you not get that? I feel like you're I'm mad at yourself. Yeah, I am. That's mm-hmm. so simple now that, uh, now that, yeah, now that you know. Damn. I should have known right. you would have gone Breaking Bad. Yeah. Damn. I did, well, I didn't want to go because you got the last one so quickly. So I didn't want to go like, oh, well, this motherfucker thinks he's smart. Let me give him, <laughs> let me give him like Mrs. Puff or something. Mrs. So I wanted to, Puff. I wanted to give you someone kind of obvious, but not that was make a good the one. clues as obvious. So no, that was good. Damn. I should have gotten that. I wasn't even. I, my, I don't even know where I was thinking, but it wasn't anywhere close to that. Not even. No. I knew it on the inside. So, what made you go Harry Potter? You said something about you know academics, but then turned to a, a darker side. I was like, well, yeah. So Harry focused on his schoolwork at first, but then he just had to worry about taking care yeah. of evil, and you know, that's true. Well, speaking of Harry Potter, I mean, he broke bad. He did break bad, but I actually have on my list some Harry Potter plot holes. That I found pretty interesting. Well, Harry Potter plot holes. Uh. Yeah, I know we talk about them all the time. So I, I came across one today and I thought, okay. well, let me see what other ones are out there that we haven't discussed. So I have yeah. some that I don't think we've discussed. I know we discuss Harry Potter in, in depth quite a bit. All right. Well, what's the first one you got? The first one is that, well, uh, let me ask you. Okay. What are the animals allowed at Hogwarts? Uh, let's see. Cats, rats, toads. Um, so you, and that little puff thing, that little, I don't, I don't, I think I don't know that's what it's a creature, called. Not an animal, but okay. so the point of this one was that I guess it's referenced that remember when McGonagall says you're, or and no, dogs, dogs are allowed because no, Hagrid no has one. Yeah, but he's not a, a student. Well, he, he's at Hogwarts. So do you remember when they're in Diagon Alley and Harry's looking at a shopping list and he's like, you're allowed an owl, cat or toad. Oh, an owl. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But rats are never specified. So you're not allowed. Oh, a rat. you're right. But no one ever says anything. But Rob walks in like it's it's no it's another yeah. day, and, and it's been they say, been in his family. They know it's been there because it it falls on the floor and runs up. Or no, that was that was Neville's toad. Yeah, but nobody but else has a they, nobody yeah, else has they, a rat. Yeah, and they know about it. Hmm. So that was one. Okay, okay. This one was it kind of shocked me. So in what movie was it when they all go flying? <clears throat> when they all. When they're on the hippogriff flying, or no, 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 no. When, when they're, when everybody turns into Harry with the Polyjuice potion, that I want to say is Half Blood. Okay, so I don't think it is. I think it might be Part One. Regardless, yeah, it is Part One. It is Part One. Why? Yeah. Why did everybody turn into Harry 
and Harry just not turn into like a muggle or something. Or they all turn into somebody that's not Harry and they're just flying yeah. around. Well, no, I mean, don't, is... just just don't don't even fly. Turn into a muggle. Take the bus. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, let's all dress up as Harry and like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Setting that's yourself up for failure. Uh, this one's good. So you remember when they were at the when Hermione went to Slughorn's little ball gathering, whatever the fuck it yeah. was. And she had to explain to everybody that her father was a dentist and nobody knew what it was. Yeah. So in, what is it, Chamber of Secrets, I think, when they come and rescue Harry. When there was bars on his window. <laughs> so when they get back to Ron's house, they show that grandfather clock and it goes, boop, kids are home. Right. One of the faces on that clock says dentist. Oh, really? As if they're at the dentist. Yeah. I would never do that. I didn't either. And I was like, but nobody knows what a fucking dentist is. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, why didn't everyone use liquid luck before the Battle of Hogwarts? There's a lot of times that they could have. Most people should be using. Yeah. Yeah. And if he can come up with it because he's a professor in potions and he made that one, why can't he make right enough for yeah whatever occasion? Uh, and to the same effect, why didn't the opposite side use it too? That I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's a good plot hole. That's good. But, the next one is, how did Ron and Hermione get back up from the Chamber of Secrets? Because if you recall the time that Harry was down there, he was basically dead, and Fox took them all out, flying through some fucking hole in the top of a cave. But then when they went back down... When Ron and Hermione went down, how did they get out? Escalator. Yeah, it must have been. I don't know. That's a good one. I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure they could have just used some kind of levitating whatever... One, two, swish, and get me up kind of thing, you know? They don't use liquid luck before the biggest fight of their life. I doubt they're using the fucking escalator. <laughs> okay. This was another one that I never even realized. Uh, so Cho Chang was a year older than Harry. Don't you know? She graduated the year before Harry, but she was at the Battle of Hogwarts in uniform. And she graduated the year before. Yeah. Maybe she was, like, doing an internship. <laughs> Wouldn't? Is she in student attire? A uh, yeah, a wizard ship. Mm -hmm. I don't or think she'd wear. I don't. I don't think she'd wear her house crest on there. Well, she had a bad home life, and that's all the clothes she had. So she, you know, she wanted okay. to look, yeah, you know, the part. Uh, all right, I got two more. <laughs> okay. If wizards start school at eleven, mm -hmm. how do they learn basic skills like math and spelling? Well, you learn that how starting Before. at seven or eight, first second grade. Yeah, where? They don't start school till they're 11. Well, they don't start wizarding school till 11. I don't think they go to muggle school. Homeschool. Okay. <laughs> Is that what we're going with? <laughs> You're going to homeschool. Uh, all right, and the last one. Uh, in the Goblet of Fire, it said that muggle technology doesn't work at Hogwarts. Wait, I think, I'm trying to think of what they use for muggle technology. They don't use like, like a cell Like though, where right? I'm going with this. It's not yeah, a what yeah. they use. It's what an individual Is, uses. At Hogwarts? Um, it's only in only in one movie. Muggle technology. I don't know. <laughs> what does Colin Creevy <laughs> use? Oh, a camera. A big old Muggle flash camera. Yeah, from like eighteen twelve. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a good one. I like it. A lot of those. A lot of head scratchers. Those are those are good. Yeah. I've never never heard those. Yeah, and we've definitely gone through some Harry Potter rabbit holes. So that was um. Yeah, there there were a lot of other ones too, but they were. Like you could apply them to anything. Like why? Like why does Harry wear glasses? There's you. You got to be able to, you know, use a spell to make him see. And then when when Ron and Hermione were and Harry were traveling through the woods on their own in Deathly Hallows, and they were like running out of food. Like just use like a food multiplier spell yeah. to like the biggest one has to be the time turner. Yeah, like you have that, and this is what. Well, Awful the things one and only happen time you've to used wizards who mess with time. Yeah, 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 I get it, I get it. But, come on. Yeah. I think that one's just too obvious to have been on any of these lists. Well, yeah, as soon as you enter time travel into any equation in any story, there's That's, a billion yeah. loopholes. That's a discussion in its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, I got just kind of like something cool that I heard about through somebody at work. They just got back from their vacation. I was like, oh, where'd you go? She was like, uh, we went to uh, to Denver. I was like, oh, okay. Do you have, like, family in Denver or, like, you know, 
what made you choose to go to Denver, Colorado? And she's like, well, it, I didn't. What? I think I know where you're going with You've this. heard of this. Okay. So it was something called uh, Pack Up and Go is the name of the company, the service, the travel agency, whatever they are. And oh, you kind of so maybe it's you kind of do like one of these surveys of like, what kind of activities do you like to do? What kind of places do you like to visit and go and, and, and all these sorts of things? And you check what you like and you kind of check the things you don't like. And then you don't find out where you're going <laughs> until the day you leave. They send you your itinerary, your tickets, your hotel, everything that morning. And they say, okay, this morning you're going to Denver on this flight. Your hotel is this once you get there. And then they send you Uber vouchers and food vouchers and drink vouchers. And then you, and then they set up activities for you as well. And you can also kind of go off and do your own thing. And it was like a three, four day thing. They didn't know where they were going. Denver was the choice. They went to Denver, did everything that was on the itinerary. That was kind of part of the package. And yeah. then they could also do whatever, whatever they, they wanted. wanted and to, I was like, yeah. well, were you happy with, you know, the destination and the price you paid and all that? And She's like, yeah, I mean, we had fun, but I wouldn't choose to go to Denver, Colorado for a vacation. I was like, yeah, there's probably better places in Colorado to go when to. When did she go? Uh, just last week. So it's probably still kind of cold. Yeah, she said it snowed their first day, um, and then the next day it was kind of a little chilly. And then after that, it got to be a very nice couple of days. It was sunny and like in the 50s and 60s. So they had fun. They had a good time. But again, was kind of like, I would, you know, because it was, I think she said mid thousand dollars like 1500 bucks give or take um, well, basically everything you paid follow for. itinerary yeah all expenses paid well everything's paid for which I, I, it was a cool concept but at the same time i wouldn't want to pay that money and then go and then be oh, like what the fuck i'm going to topeka kansas yeah Shit. <laughs> yeah i heard about something like that that's not where i thought you were going with that but i did hear about something like that for not not like a, a service or like a company that actually does it but a bunch of like some company did it for like rich people or something like that. I think in another country, it was like one of those like hundred grand and you're guaranteed to go to a place that you probably want to go all expenses paid. But it wasn't like a do it whenever you want. It was like a contest kind of thing. So it was like, you know, we have a hundred spots, 50,000 people sign up. Whoever hits the hundred spots has to pay, but they get their money's worth kind of thing. But no, I didn't know it was like an actual company that you could do that. But I, it, I'd same. I, I don't want to end up somewhere that I have no interest going. Yeah, like but, oh, you you like mountain ranges and this and this, and they're like, oh, you're going to Juneau, Alaska in January, and I'm yeah. like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. So where I thought you were going with that is something I'd said I always wanted to do, just spontaneously, was go to an airport and be like, what's your what's your next flight out? Be like, okay, I want to go there. Obviously, you would have to be like. Like for yeah, you, you'd have to go to Orlando, you know not do. Melbourne, because you'd be going to Atlanta. Well, that's so what you, I was just going to say is you just end up at a hub. You'd go to Memphis or Charlotte or. <laughs> right. Yeah. For somewhere like that. But if you go to like Orlando, if I went over to Tampa, it's like you, you walk through and you're, it's like Vegas or Seattle or LA or this or that. And you're like, so it's like, what's, what's next? Like, well, what's I, the first thing that's still available that I have time to get through security and make it? And I think I'd go. rather you're. We, uh, we've had the discussion of like renting like a beater or buying yeah. like a, a thousand dollar Honda and just traveling the country for like three or four weeks, like, so like a, over, enough time to not have yeah. to hurry about going anywhere, stop wherever you want, not have to worry about yeah really much of anything and just go. I, I'd much just rather do that. Time. Yeah, I would for, too. Just, just for like a month as opposed to, hey, take me there for two or three days. Yeah. Well, you also have to have the month. This is just like. You know, oh, I have, sure. a, I have sure. a long weekend. Let me go, you know, pay 300 bucks and end up somewhere random. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a good yeah, point. Definitely still want to do that cross country. That was, I heard about that from throwing names out there, but yeah, that wasn't my idea. That was something well, I'd heard. And I was like, that's brilliant. That's a great idea. Well, yeah. once, once, uh, well, yeah, we'll do it in 18 years. Yeah. Maybe 14. Maybe <laughs> 14. Hard enough. You, you want to play a game? Let's play a game. You want to see something cool? Oh my goodness. What's that? What's that, Bill? Is that the Bill Buff? Is that Bill Buff? Is that your cookies? Are you so pretty? What's that? Her heart just started beating <laughs> yeah. really fast. Her face went, don't fucking mess with me. So, you ready to play? 
Let's play. David, are you smarter than a fifth grader? If uh, if history is any indication, then no. Then no. Well, let's, let's hit you with some first grade geography. Thank God and for I putting that want there. you to tell me what continent are the pyramids of Giza located in? Africa. Final they are answer. in Africa. That is a great answer. For second grade, you got science. Okay. How many legs do arachnids have? Eight. Finally, I got eight legs. Correct. I got third grade social studies. The first fireworks were invented in what country during the seventh century? The United States. During the seventh century is your hint. <clears throat> Europe. <clears throat> we were looking for China. Looking for China. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking you said continent. That's why I said Europe. Not that I would have got it anyway. The USA is also not a continent. <laughs> you didn't say continent. You said country. No, I, I said, oh, you're right. I did say country. But then you went continent after a country. Yeah. Moving we'll on. Blame, we'll blame the riot juice. <laughs> uh, fourth grade English. Mm. What is the main character in a story called? The protagonist. That is correct. And for that... fifth grade math, a hexagon has how many sides? Six. Six is correct. Four for five. Okay. I think that's better than I did last time, right? You got four for five last time as well. Uh, I thought I got three of five. Uh, I, I would have got three for five if you would ask that whatever instrument is used to measure whatever the fuck bullshit ass science question i'm gonna just nod my head like i know what you're asking me right the, now uh, oh the fuck? Yeah. yeah 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 that one yeah yep yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that one something fucking retarded like that well not bad not bad well how would you like to play a game i'd love it this game is called real or fake <laughs> i need it just do you, you have any ask idea where i'm going or no idea okay so I'm going to give you some news headlines. Oh, okay. Some Florida man news headlines. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. And you got to tell me if they're real or fake. All right. I'm down. And any that are real, I will expound upon and and give a, a, little, a little gist of the story. Sounds good. Cool. All right. So the first one. Florida man claims alien diplomacy after being found building a spaceship in public park. <laughs> Going real. <laughs> that one is fake. Shit. Okay. However, don't let that deter you from guessing any of the other ones to be real. Okay. Florida man attempts to pay for diner meal with sand dollars, calls it beach currency. <laughs> Definitely real. <laughs> <laughs> that one is also fake. Okay. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm gonna just say real for all. <laughs> okay. They sound um, they, so yeah. legit. Okay, keep going. The next one is Florida man arrested for crashing car into a mall, says he was trying to time travel. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> where was Marty from? Right. Is he at the Twin Pines? Uh, I'm going to say real. That is real. So, All right. Okay. A car crashed into a mall on North Davis Highway in Pensacola, Florida. When cops questioned the unidentified man driving the Dodge Challenger, he said he was trying to time travel when the incident occurred. Damn, he even crashed a nice car. Well, the next one is police say a Florida man with no arms and no legs is armed and on the run. <laughs> oh, uh, pl I, uh, please say it's real. It is real. <laughs> Florida police were looking for a person <laughs> suspected of an Florida police were looking for a person suspected of a horrible incident. Sean Petrozino, the suspect, is a quadruple amputee who lived with his parents after separating from his wife. The police warned the public, saying <laughs> Petrozino was armed <laughs> and on the run. <laughs> That's so good, dude. And, uh, uh, the uh, and, and on the run is what really and on the run, Yeah, armed like the arm and part, on the run. I was like, that yeah. was funny. And on the run. Okay. I wanted to keep all of them, but I had like 40, so I had to, I think I trimmed it down to like nine. Okay. The next one is... Florida man drives stolen truck to Space Force Base to warn of a battle between aliens and dragons. Ooh, aliens and dragons. I'm going to go fake. My first fake. That one is real. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Of Corey, jo is. <laughs> Corey Johnson was charged with grand auto theft in July 2022. He stole whoa, 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 whoa. Who says grand auto theft? I think that's what it's actually called. I don't know. I guess Continue. authorities in, in Florida. So Corey Johnson was charged with grand auto <laughs> theft in July 2022. He stole a Ford F-150 and drove it to a Space Force base to warn the government about mythical creatures. He told the authorities that U.S. aliens were fighting with Chinese dragons. <laughs> the fact that he specified their, uh, their yeah, country of origin. Right, yeah. <laughs> these, weren't, 
<laughs> these weren't Malaysian dragons. These, these were Chinese weren't, dragons. These weren't regular dragons. Right. These are Chinese. <laughs> Chinese firebolt. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right. The next one is Florida woman claims to have found the fountain of youth. Turns out to be a sprinkler. <laughs> oh, man. We need to make. I wish I had like knew how to like animate things because I could just like like little make like little just animated like shorts. Yeah, and her just like like a dog putting her mouth over it, like following it and biting it, <laughs> thinking she's gonna get forever life. I might be able like, to find some. I'll see what I can find. Um, I'm gonna go with that. It's got to be real. That one's fake. Damn it. Okay. That one's fake. Those um, are hysterical. So the next one we got is. Florida man impersonating a police officer pulls over real cops. Real. It is real. Yeah. Matthew was Joseph. Was his name um, Jeremy? No, it DeWitt? was Matthew, Matthew Joseph Aris. Oh, okay. He was arrested April 2019 after impersonating a police officer, unknowingly stopped an undercover cop who later called 911 to inform the real cops who apprehended him. Okay, okay. Because I, I, I definitely go through, like, YouTube rabbit holes of, you, you know, I'll be watching another individual that... Did this? I'll be watching like cops or like live PD or something. And yeah, it's like, watch this. And there's this guy in Orlando in Orange County who's like, he's been arrested like four or five times for impersonating police because he owns his own security company and they do um, like funeral processions and stuff like that. So he has vehicles and they wear gear. And, you know, instead of red and blue lights, he has like orange and purple lights and he does all this stuff. And they just keep arresting him. And every time they pull him over, they just yell out just they they already know him and then he finally got arrested again for sexually assaulting a minor or something like that and a little bit more so yeah and he got like once they knew it was him they were like oh maximum sentence like this guy he's given us trouble for years and years interesting huh look him you up remember uh, his name J- huh jeremy G- dewitt, DeWitt? Yeah. Mm-hmm. uh-huh that sounds like a dude that would do that they wait till you see them. You yeah. should you should check it out. It's pretty Gander funny. On them. Yeah, it's pretty funny. All right, I got two more. How many have we got, got right so far? Like one mm, or two? Half? Yeah, not even. Yeah. All right. Florida man arrested for trying to pawn stolen shark from local aquarium. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> All right. Well, let, let's let's start with the real or fake part. Um, yes. I'm going to say that it's fake. It is fake, which should eliminate. Then I have less questions. questions. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And the last one is Florida man breaks into a house, cleans it, and leaves behind origami. Definitely real. Definitely real. In 2019, a man identified as Nate Roman from Marlboro, Massachusetts, reported a funny incident that left many shocked. He came home and found an intruder had entered his home and cleaned everything in the house, including spreading his, I'm assuming that's supposed to be bed, it says bead including spreading, spreading his bed and scrubbing the toilets. What is even more crazy is that he left behind origami roses <laughs> on his toilet paper rolls just like your maid service would you know <laughs> hey man i was i was i was i was using your shitter and uh yeah i just wanted to apologize by putting a uh, yeah a, a little to, towel goose on your bed just want to leave you a little something yeah yeah so that's uh, i want to keep that one up because that's that's good i like that i was oh, just I dying. you might give me the one um it's a real one it was um florida man hangs from traffic that light was, yeah, and, sh- so and I, shits on cars as they I drive by. That. <laughs> that was one of those, uh, it was like a Facebook post that was like, Google Google your birthday and Florida man. And like, <laughs> and like post the story that comes up. It was like, yeah, and he was Florida naked man hangs from traffic it. sign or hangs from traffic light and shits on cars as they pass underneath. And I'm like, <laughs> you're just going to work. And there's just fucking corn cobs being dropped <laughs> on your windshield. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, man. Yeah. What a state we live in. What a what state. What a state. What a state. Man, oh man. As we both wear Maryland gear. I love it. It's too funny. But you know what? Every October to February, everyone wishes they were here. Well, that's why half the country moves, not half the country, but that's why everyone moves down here during that October to yeah. April, March, April. They're yep. just, because it, uh, honestly, it's not really great, great, great down here until like December through like right now, like mid-March is like prime time. Yeah. Prime time. Like nothing above 75, nothing below 50. Beautiful. I just hate, Beautiful. and I've always hated about down here that when I go to work in the morning, I have to wear a jacket, but when I leave, I'm like sweating my ass off. That's the only I'd rather that like than, complain. yeah, then oh, I'm, I'm then leaving at, work 3 at 20, p.m. get out of work at 40. Yeah. And I still have to clean off my windshield. Yeah. yeah. 
and wash my car every other day, get all the salt off of it. Yeah. yeah. No. no, no, no. No, sir. No, sir. So we had a little bit of uh, research we had to do because we want to play another game, right? We want to play another game. We want to play another game. I want to play a which game. Which would be a draft. So for those who haven't watched or listened to, I think it's a podcast three. ever. Yeah. Um, we each have five slots to fill our draft of the best things of a certain category, category. or, yeah, category. Yeah. Um, this time we're going to be doing the blue draft, correct? Correct. Okay. So how do we decide who goes first? I feel like that's, that's a We've, big advantage. The same for the color blue? Well, who knows? So the way we did the last one was I went first because the way we did the one before that was you went first. So oh, I, you're right. I think we're just kind of alternating. So this okay. Be well, then we'll just keep first. that going. So it would be I you. went first. You went first. You, then me. Now it's you. Now it's me. Okay. Correct. I don't like that because now I've got. Um, <laughs> you just said that it's a big advantage. Because well, now I'm now I'm. You want uh, to trade your first round pick? Now I'm I'm for, for two two future first round picks. I'm a bit torn now because um, I have some I've, contradictory answers and I've I have like fifteen. Because remember, it's it's anything. I've, blue. I have thirteen. I have thirteen. It could be an item that's blue. It could be just the word yeah. blue in a name. It could be anything associated with blue. All right. Well, with I'm so excited for this, the first pick in the blue draft, I'm gonna go with Earth. Okay. The big blue planet. Yeah, I think the blue planet is actually Neptune, uh, according to Morgan Freeman in his Netflix documentary. Okay. <laughs> we'll let uh, we'll let whoever comments on this uh, address their beliefs on whether. Oh, Earth's what sixty percent water? I think it's seventy. Seventy. But I'm with my, Earth. my only uh, I'm, my so, only, so I'm just curious where you're going to go with it. So I wanted to kind of stay semi. My only objection so. is I'm pretty sure Neptune is called the Blue Planet. But I love that sound. <laughs> my like Jolene Myers went up. <laughs> what was that? So. I don't think you're going to like where I'm going to go with it. Go ahead. Based on both of our attires. I have... Mm, okay, I'm gonna go, go the, ahead. I'm going to go with the Maryland Blue Crab. That was my next one. That was my next one. That was my next one. You should uh, You should have picked that first. Well, I thought Earth was... You know, crabs are on Earth, so I got them already. <laughs> then you have my <laughs> like, entire list. <laughs> I have both of our lists already, because I, I took Earth. Yeah, so that's a really good one. That's a really good one. Um, oof. Okay. Um... So my next one, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up a little bit, um, going into the entertainment I feel like realm. Anything anything you could do next would be switching it up a bit. And if you so pick one mine, of, I'm gonna be really upset. Well, and you I would think never, you're gonna do it. No, I'm not, because you would never pick this. Um, but it's one of my all time favorite movies. Okay, is it? Can I guess it? Yeah, is Paul Walker in it? No, he's maybe not. I, maybe I have the wrong movie. Close. Oh, I was thinking of a different one. Not even close. Is it deep um, something? No, it's not deep blue sea. No. Is Paul Walker in that? No, I don't think so. I know Coolio is. That's all I got. Okay. All right. Go so ahead. with my second overall pick, I'm going with. I wish I had some some sunglasses and the pack of cigarettes. The Blues Brothers. Okay. Hands down, top ten favorite movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't think I knew oh, that, yeah. but yeah. Oh yeah. That makes me want to go somewhere, but I'm not gonna. Okay. Oh, man, I wish we could do this like a ten draft. Yeah, there's. I want to use a lot of these, but I can't. So I can use all of them unless you do. Okay, well, go ahead. What's your number two? I think for number two, I'm going to go with Blue Moon, the beer. Not even on my list, to be honest. Not even on my list. But I'm. It's my fave. I'm kind of upset faves. because you're eating crabs and drinking beer, and I'm <laughs> and I'm looking at Earth and watching a movie. <laughs> I think you're winning this draft right now. Uh oh, so far so good. That's good. Um, that's funny. You know what? With number three. Um, got some in my fridge right now. They're delicious. I'm going blueberries. Okay. I had that on my list. I think that's a solid choice. I'm not mad at it at all. Okay. Now, where do I want to, I feel like you're not going to, it's like mine for the, the, my list is mine for the, the pickings. Cause I don't know that you're going to take any of them just based on your, you're not going to take the rest of mine. I don't think either. No, probably not. We'll see. So, I'm not sure how I want to go yet, but go ahead. I'm not either. I want to take this one, but I think you might take it. All right. So with my third round pick, I'm going to take Blue Angels. Oh, like the, the fighter the jets. Na yeah. The naval. Wow. Not even on my list either. Figure. That's a really good one. Thanks. 
That's a really good one. Um, what do they have down here? Like uh, Thunderbirds, Firebirds? I don't know. I haven't been to, well, I've been to base down here, but I haven't been near the flight line. I know up in the Panhandle, we had 35s and A-10s, 22s. Well, we had one. I can't remember the name of them. I don't know. Okay. Well, with my fourth pick, I'm going to take, oh, you know what? Deep Blue Sea is on my list. <laughs> um, I'm going to take, you're my boy, Blue. Just the same. And the guy. Old man from uh, Old School would be the yeah, movie. I didn't have that. You're my boy, Blue. You're my boy, Blue. It's my number four. You're still winning, but I'm happy with my yeah, list. I'm <laughs> not mad at it. All right, with my fourth round pick, I'm going to take Blue by Eiffel 65. Dang, that beats all the songs I have on my list. <laughs> I only have one other song. I mean, you can go ahead and take it if you want. Well, my fifth is a, is is going to be a song. Um, you know, which one do I choose? Crap. Um, Does it matter? I'm going to go with Blue Suede Shoes by Elvis Presley. That's, that's my number five one. pick. That's the one that I had. What was your other song? I'm not going to take it. I have two others. Um, Blue Tacoma, California. Okay. Uh, and then I had On My Blue Bayou. I'm going to go some. Uh, Roy Orbison, Blue Bayou. So you're missing a song. I'm not going to use it as my last pick, but the, okay. song you're, the song you're missing is Blueberry Yum Yum. Oh, by Ludacris. Yeah. On the Red Light District CD. Mmm, dang, yeah, got that da 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 get that go. I thought I thought you were gonna take that. Yeah, that's a good one. So, with my last pick, I'm gonna take Smurfs. <laughs> what were you between between Smurfs and what? Because it had to be something else. Uh, well, I can give you the rest of what I had. They were all pretty. Uh, a couple of them were good. Okay. So, as far as characters, I also had Blue from Blue's Clues. He's on my list. Yep. I had uh, Blue Jeans. Just standard old so, Levi's. I almost had blue jean. A blue jean, baby. Just not L -L -L lady. It's blue you jean. You, al you almost had it? It wasn't on I, your list? Like you started writing it and you're like, I, eh. thought, I, th I thought about it, but I was like, I, these, I'm not going to choose it. Okay. Um, I did I have also, sky and ocean. I thought about sky. Since I said earth, I was like, I can't. Yeah, you kind of encompassed all of it. When So when you said you were going to entertainment, I thought you were going blue man group. No, um, I almost went with the blues, just as a genre, as a genre. Um, okay. but instead I went with the Blues Brothers. Okay. I also had uh, Blue Curacao. Oh, that's had, a good one. I had Blue Jay or Blue Jays if I wanted yeah, the bird of the team. Yeah, no one's drafting the Blue Jay. Yeah. I had Blue Mountain State. Oh, that's a good one. And I had Blue Bloods. I thought you were going to pick that. To be honest, um, the only other one I had was Blue Origin. I was like, we're down in the Space Coast. I know they're in Texas, but I was like, eh, you know. Yeah. Okay. So you said Smurfs. Can you tell me the villain's name in the Smurfs? Nope. Can you tell me the villain's cat's name in the Smurfs? Does it start with a P? No, it starts with an A. Ah, uh, no. So the villain is uh, Gargamel. Ah, Does that ring right. any bells? Yep. And then his cat is as Asriel? As Asriel? Something like that. Like Israel, but with an A? It's like A-Z something? Like as Asriel? Like an asshole. Yeah, he was. They both were. Hmm. That was That's good. good. That was a good like draft. That. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Right, I got one more thing. How much you got? I'm done. Okay, cool. So this is very, uh, it's like a, a saving the best for life. I don't even know how. I came across the first thing, and then I was like, there's got to be more shit. And it led to like four things. Okay. So I want to talk to you about weird sports slash competitions, events, anything such as like have, hot dog eating contest sort of. Do you have um, shin kicking on there? No. Okay. Right. That wasn't weird enough to make this list. Oh, God. Okay. All right. So the, the first one is, have you ever heard of gurning? Mm, no. Okay. So gurning is the act of like making a weird face, basically. Exactly. So <laughs> I guess. I guess I'm sure that the, helped the audio listeners there. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I guess in the in the UK they do this annual competition of like who can make the most grotesque face, and they do it at the Agramont, wherever that is, and they've been doing it since 1297. And it's my first thought is like those guys that like can like they're they're missing bones in their face or something, but they yeah, can like and that's, tuck that's in their what mouth. It is. That, is that what that's, it is? That's oh, the traditional okay. like face is like pulling your bottom lip up over. So you your can nose only compete kind of if you have a birth deformity. Something no, because there's, there's other ones, too. I don't know if I'll, how if or how I'll be able to attach photos to the video, but there's, like, 
it's like a, a huge thing over there. There's like world right like this one chick's won like 18 years in a row. Uh, there's another dude that won like four. The dude has like the world record for like four wins, which is like the most wins years in a row. It was it's very I, I got down a rabbit hole with it and I was just and they apparently they take it so serious over there. Like they train all the article <laughs> I read said they train like Olympic athletes. And I'm like, I, I highly making disagree a face. With that. Yeah, I highly disagree. With that. So that's one. OK. And I again, I don't remember how I got into that but it led me down this other path. Oh, and also to that one, uh, makeup is banned, but false teeth are allowed. Cut. Yeah, okay. Cut. Uh, the, ne- the next one is ferret legging. Do you know what that is? Legging? Ferret, ferret legging? legging. Legging. Ferret legging. Um, is that where they actually use ferrets to actually, like, do what a weasel's meant to do and, like, hunt a snake kind of thing? Or no, nah, nothing like that. Uh, you're... In a very disturbing way, you're close. Okay, go ahead. So in the sport of ferret legging, the competitors tie their trousers to the bottom of their pant legs. They tie them shut, and then they tighten their belt as tight as they can with a ferret down their pants. <laughs> so it is, in essence, chasing a snake. As you're, a not f- allowed to wear, <laughs> you're not allowed to wear boxers. And apparently the way it works is you stand in front of the judge with your, your cuffs tied. You put it down. You tighten your belt. And you stand there. And whichever contestant stands there the longest wins. Without, like, running away or getting it out of their pants or... Right. So I've owned two ferrets in my life. I know. And I thought you might like this one because of that. And I can't even imagine. Now, I mean, ferrets, just like any other pet, you can train and, you know, they're going to learn to... I don't think they're their pets, though. I think it's just like, That's even worse. This is it. Yeah. Not only are they going to scratch and bite the hell out of you, but they're going to... Piss and shit well, so, all over your legs. So listen, listen to the rules here. Competitors cannot be drunk or drugged, nor can the ferrets be sedated. In addition, the competitors are not allowed to wear underwear. Um, they must, which must allow ferrets free access from one leg to the what other. What do they get if they win this amazing contest? That I don't know, but hold on, there's more. Because who's who's doing this voluntarily? Uh, people in England, I think. Yeah, but for Just a reason. I don't know. Ferrets must have a full set of teeth that have not been filed, and the winner is the person who lasts the longest. Yeah, it's so particular with these rules that obviously they've run into people trying to cheat to win, so there's got to be something to to this winning this, like... I don't know, we'll have to look it up. Good lord. The next one is Buzkashi. Buzkashi. Do you have any idea? Sounds like Indian, maybe. Um, it's the national sport of Afghanistan. Uh, okay. Um, Buzkashi. Buzkashi. Um, is... Hold on, I feel like I've... I've seen. I feel like um, this is one of those things that would stick with you, like a food fight. Oh gosh, it's not like that slapping contest thing. No, it's not like the shin kicking contest. It's nothing like that. No, go yeah, ahead. Let me just yeah, yeah. just tell you before you before you don't get there. <laughs> uh, it's a traditional sport in which horse mounted players attempt to place a goat or calf carcass in a goal, which is normally beheaded and disemboweled, and typically has two limbs cut off and is then soaked in cold water for 24 hours to toughen it. Occasionally, sand is packed in the carcass to give it extra weight, though a goat is used when no calf is available because a calf is less likely to disintegrate during the game. So it's basically like polo, but with a beheaded and gutted goat. Yeah. Well, and fun fact for those who don't know about the sport of the cross, it reminded me of that as soon as you said it. No? Nothing? Care to Care to elaborate? Well, so lacrosse was invented, one, by Native Americans. Okay. Two, the ball Why was... Did, what does that have to do with... Two, the ball was the head of a rival tribe that they used. And it wasn't traditional where you had a basket to carry a little ball, and it was almost more along the lines of, like, field hockey. Like rugby? Oh, with a stick. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. So the la- the last one is kind of my favorite. Okay. Which, I'm, not that you should have a favorite of any of these, but it's called... Uh, I'm assuming t- Takanakui? Uh, that's, that's my favorite one. You don't even have to tell me. I already know. What is it? I have no idea. Okay. I thought you actually knew it. No clue. So it's an annual established practice of fighting fellow community members, and it takes place on Christmas in Peru. It's like the, so, like the purge. Yeah. So basically it's like the purge. At the end of the year, everybody gets together mm-hmm. in like a rink, but it's like a whole <laughs> event. So they have like preliminary... Mm-hmm. 
what do you call it, like music before, like the <laughs> pre-festival music or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. then basically the way it works is you get into the ring and you call people out. So I'd get in, I'd be like, hey, Chris, I've been waiting all fucking year to whoop your ass, get in here. <laughs> and then huh. we just fight. But you're not allowed to bite, hit them when they're on the ground, or pull their hair. Can you put them in like submission holds and that kind of thing? You yeah, I guess they could. They could. T- you just can't kick them while they're down. Basically, just put them in an arm bar and say good night. Yep. And then well, I don't. I don't know if men can fight women. All it said is that men have to wrap their hands. Oh, okay. So when fighting each other, but I don't know if they're allowed to like call out women too. I don't. I don't know how any of that works. But yeah, so it's basically like the purge every year on Christmas. They get in there and they're like, "What's up, bitch? We're doing it." Yeah. And yep. I don't. I also don't know if you have like a say. Like if you if you purchase a ticket to the event. Is that like you hereby agree to fight whoever calls you out, or you know, like nah, dude? Like I don't I'm have to look into that. Well, I don't know what you said, but it reminded me of uh, like uh, kind of some eh, maybe let's say not truth says kids. So like some kind of stuff that we believed that was real, but it actually wasn't. Like uh, turning the light on in the car is illegal. Exactly. Yeah. So what else do you remember? Is there anything specific that like? As kids, you you talk to each other about, like, you heard this thing, and it was obviously a true statement because you heard it, so it's real. One that always bothered me was that if you go to sleep chewing gum, it'll get in your hair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because that's, if I go to sleep chewing gum, it ending in my hair is the least of my worries. Like, what if I choke on it in the middle right. of the night and die? Like, right. Why do I care about my hair? Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there are others, but that was always the two that stuck out. I'm sure you probably have some that... I recall. Yeah. So do you recall anything about Marilyn Manson? Yeah. He removed the bottom of his, his two bottom ribs so he could suck his own dick. Yeah. So not true. Yeah. <laughs> First I off, know that. not true. Um, do you remember anything about the soda surge? Uh, it is. Does this, speci- does this have anything to do with the taurine? No, no, no. Specifically the dye yellow five. Does that no. ring any bells? Like very, very vaguely. And why we were worried about this as kids, I don't know. But in, I want to say like elementary school, middle school, at the latest, was if you drank Surge, it would shrink your dick. And you'd never had that one that down. That sounds, in, yeah, that one sounds familiar. But as fifth graders, like, you're worried. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, it's, oh man. I got to show this off at, I in the play stop, next week. I got to stop drinking Surge yeah. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Still trying to figure out what a penis is. Still trying to, yeah. You just had your first sex ed class, and you're like, oh, it's going to make my dick shrink. In fifth grade? No. Nah, no, nah, that was, was... Yes, yeah, so fifth was, grade was my first... Um, they, they took... It was at the end of the school year. I still remember yeah. it very, very vividly. Because they, they didn't put, want the rest of the year to be awkward with the teacher and the they kids. They put all the boys in one classroom, and they put all the girls in yeah, another classroom. they did that for us. And they had a male teacher with the boys and a female with the females. And I just remember... Uh, the first, it was the first time I was hearing an adult say the word testicles and scrotum. You were like, <laughs> and penis. You're not allowed to say that. And he couldn't get through 30 seconds without the whole room erupting. I remember it like it was yesterday. And he would say the word. I feel like mine was the opposite. It was he would like, say the word testicle. Was like, no, no. And it was like, you know. I still remember it. it was at the end of the day, too. I saw it was end of the day, end of the school year. And they, they put us in our room. don't give teachers enough credit. And they were over there talking, I'm sure, about periods and fallopian tubes and tampons yeah. and all that fun stuff. And I'm sure they were just in there fun. quietly listening like a yeah. normal human while the boys mm-hmm. are in there talking about balls and shafts, laughing yeah. their butts off. Yeah. Testicles. And <laughs> that's funny. No, that was I think that was sixth grade for us. That's yeah, close. You know, you're 10, 11 ish. You know, I think that was I don't even remember the teacher's name. Well, I think that's all I got for this one. You just you throw one last little thing in here when I was on. When I was on my way to the doctor today, this fucking old... I don't know how to be polite about this. Well, you started very, out with fucking old, so this, you got off to this a very, start. <laughs> this very fucking old lady <laughs> didn't know how to use a turn signal and just decided to very swoop fucking over old into bitch. the fucking... Just go yeah. ahead and say it. So she know, bitch. didn't know how to use a turn signal. Yeah, so I just... And I'm like, yeah, I'm like trying to brainstorm shit to talk about the whole way of the doctor. So immediately I pull into the doctor's parking lot and I'm like... How old should you be when you have to lose your license? Because fuck her. So that was me writing a note to well, ask you on this podcast. How old, at what age do you think, at least a reassessment? Like, hey, they should probably test again. I'm going to say 70. Okay. I also think that should apply to, not to get into it too deep, but I'm going to say politics. And to be yeah. a politician and be in a position of power, 
you basically have to be retired from any normal job in society. There should definitely be an age limit, without a doubt, because I think right now there's a lot of uh, crusties, I'm going to call them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Accurate. (laughs) That are making decisions that... mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, my, my final take is I, I'll agree with 70. And then I think once you hit that threshold, whether it be 70, 75, whatever, every year after that, you should have to retest. Every five years, you mean? No, every year. Once so you're that you're, age? 71, 72, 73, 74, 75? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Think of how much you age between 70 and 75. Maybe not even like reassess in the sense of like you have to go take a driving class, but maybe take an online assessment with like, driving questions on it no i think you need to physically do it Oof. i hated driving school man so did i i, I was so anxious I also, and nervous I hate, I hate being cut off by 80 year olds even more <laughs> yeah i mean i remember i was when i first got my license i still remember the first place i went by myself because with your learner's permit you always had to have somebody right. with you right so i remember being up the night before thinking about what roads i had to get on where i was going how to get there, what lane to get in at the lights, and the every quest, detail about it. I was going to the Best Buy by the mall in Annapolis. And spot. it dropped by. It was, uh, I got a subwoofer. Day my car. one, license, getting a sub. It's fucking like 17, yeah. <laughs> like, in that, come on. In that Civic, right? I needed to hear my Project Pat and my 36 Mafia, you know. Didn't we all? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, well, I bought mine with some some duels already in it. Yeah. So otherwise, I probably would have been going to Best Buy. You know, I thought about this earlier. Can you, I'm going to name some names and you tell me the first car they owned. You ready? Okay. What car did Mike drive? I don't remember. His, his first car it was red. Yeah. Was it a it was Mercury? Big. It was. And Mercury what? Grand Marquis. It was a Cougar. Oh, okay. Um, how about Joe? That's the Silverado. Yep. Um, Zach? That was the Civic. Okay. I was with him when he got that. Pat? I think that was the, what was that, a Thunderbird? No, you're real close. Is that it's what a it is? Bir- it's a bird. You're close. You're real oh, close. Oh, the, the, the Eagle. The Eagle Talon. The Talon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that thing was horrible. Me? Also the Civic, right? Also a Civic. Uh, James? one of dad's cars wasn't it so i was asking you because i have no idea okay i know he had that x terra for a little bit that fucking that's right ass orange one yeah i don't yep. know if that was his first i'm gonna say yes that was his first he might okay. have been driving mom and dad's and then that was like his first i think that's all i got i was just thinking about it earlier today and i was like can i name mm-hmm. them all can david name them all yeah, yeah okay so split decision we'll settle on james as being the yeah. x terra yeah cool i like that well, I think we can uh, wrap up episode six of the Poor Choice Show. Let's do it. It was eventful and, and, I think and fruitful. It was eventful, but it was also uninterrupted, which is <laughs> the most important part. <laughs> I can edit this as one recording, and I am fucking ecstatic about it. And the best part, the funniest part to me is, is it's without me using Wi-Fi. And we've been going through this whole... I thought you turned it back on. No. <laughs> it's just well, five, how about that? It's just 5G powered right now, man. We're just hanging out. Well, how about that? How about that? Indeed. Well, cool. Well, thank you all for joining us yeah. and listening. Um, hope to see you guys next time and have a great week. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I have any any jokes about esports kids at the moment. So we'll see you guys next time. We'll see you then.